Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I've got something special for you today. This is for all you thousands of miners out there that have been going since the old school. You got your RX 470s and your 480s and your 570s and your 580s. And you got a whole box of them sitting in your closet. Well, get them out. Let's use them. Let's run Olama in Linux with a dual card setup. Let me show you here. I got mission control set up on Linux. And give it just a second here. It's taking a little breather. Both cards. 8 gig models RX 570. 100%. Going and going. Let's see what kind of performance we get. We're running Quinn 2.5 14B. Which is a 9.5 gig model. So it won't run on just one card. You gotta have both of them there. First benchmark, 8.6, 8.46 tokens a second. That is not bad. That is not bad for the age of these cards and the power draw. 363 watts. Now, I've been working on this for a couple days. I'm no Linux expert. Um, goodness, I'll try to put the steps down in, in the description. Uh, just a reminder here, this motherboard I bought specifically because it has uh, this feature. This is the ASRock Tai Chi. It's actually the light, but uh, another video I'll explain to you. I started off with the Tai Chi as an open box from Newegg. That didn't work out so well. So anyway, they price matched a brand new light version but it has it as well so both the x16 lane uh, gpu slots are routed to the cpu this is an x870e that's rare most pci slots for this card go to the chipset which is only four lanes so with this setup it's eight lanes and eight lanes at pci5 speeds which is the equivalent of 16x at pcie4 speeds so we are maximizing these cards we do not have a bottleneck in the pci bus with these older models oh and it's beautiful well these cost 30 bucks now i bought these on ebay a while back i put them in windows machine and they registered code 43 and i remembered uh, they were likely flashed the vboss was flashed for mining so I did a little search in Tech Power Up, I think, is the site that has all the, the cards and the available BIOS. And you can download ATI Flash. I think it was 2.93 version. It's an older uh, graphic user interface. But I had to flash each of these cards to get them back to stock. They're working great on Windows. And... They run an LLM great in Linux. I know that you can activate the Linux for Windows environment. I've not done that yet. And I will show you just a brief outline here of what I did. The best instructions, I did a lot of AI back and forth the last two days, three days, two and a half days, we'll call it. And the best instructions that I got to work right from the AMD um, homepage, and this is for Ubuntu 24, but I'm running 22. Just click go here, follow these instructions to the T. It works great. They have how to install the AMD drivers and the Rock M, how to set up your groups, verify that it's working. Once you've got it working and you run Rock M info and it shows your old uh, graphics cards then you go to this website and first you'll have to install docker but then you use that to pull this image which is an older model of Olama so you can't run the latest uh, models on it you set up the docker container and you run the docker container container and it's set up for llama 3 which will run fine on one card I wanted to test a dual car setup. 
So I've got Quinn 2.5, 14B, nine and a half gig model, split between these two older cards. And didn't think it was possible, honestly, but it is. September 2025, running AI with RX 570. You gotta love it. Just waiting for this to finish up here. And then I will call it a day. All right. Five runs, 8.34 tokens a second. Running a 14 billion parameter AI model. Not too bad. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one. All right, guys and gals, here we go. So you see that it works. We got the Sapphire Nitro 570 there. Showed you a little bit about how to do it. If you're not familiar with running Linux, it's really easy to get set up. Um, go out there. I'll walk you through it. Um, if you're running Windows, which I'm sure you are, it's so easy to get a dual boot system set up. I know they have Linux uh, inside of Windows. I've run that too. It's just not the same. It's best to go ahead and set up a dual boot system. And I'm happy to show you how to do that. So let's get into it. All right, to get started with the dual boot system, Windows and Linux. Uh, first, right click on start, go to disk management. Once disk management opens, you'll find your C drive. Now this is a two terabyte NVMe. Um, so you'll have to make your own decision on how much space that you want to give your Linux OS. Uh, for this use case, I'm gonna do a 400 meg setup. So you right click on your C drive, go to shrink volume. It'll do a quick drive read, enter the amount of space to shrink in megabytes. So I'll just do 402.000 and shrink. And that leaves me just about 400 gigabytes for my swap swap drive, swap partition, and then the root, root partition for Linux. And that's it uh, for that. All right, for this project, to get in the old Polaris architecture for AMD, it's recommended to run Ubuntu 22. That's Jammy Jellyfish. So to get that installed, just do a quick search. We'll pull up the website. Select an image, desktop image, 64-bit. This, of course, is depending, or assuming that you're running 64-bit Windows. I highly recommend that you do 11 or 10. I'll even work on 8, I'm not sure, but this is 11 Pro here. You click on this, it'll download the image file, which is an ISO, and the next thing you'll have to do is burn that ISO to a USB drive. Uh, for most Windows projects, I use Rufus, but for Linux, I find it's better to use Etcher. So just download this app, and then this is what the app looks like. So you'll just put in your, US, your USB drive, which is here. Flash from file, select your ISO, open, select your target, and hit flash. And that will take just a few minutes. And once that's done, and you've got the um, partition shrunk on your C drive to give your Linux install some space, you'll be about ready for a dual boot. So next, We'll leave the USB drive completed um, or after the flash is done and your USB is ready for install for Linux, uh, you'll reboot. And I'll show you the next part. All right, once you've rebooted, or during the reboot process, on my motherboard F11 will get me to a prompt where I can select my boot drive. And that's what you need to do. And we're going to select the USB that we just created with Etcher that has our Ubuntu uh, boot image on there. And you'll see 
Mine already has Ubuntu because I have been messing with this for several days and the EFI or the install process will write an EFI entry to your already existing Windows EFI uh, partition. So you probably won't see that, don't worry about it. So select your USB drive. And wait a second, and your Ubuntu install will pop up. I'll breeze through this. I've done it multiple times in the last couple days. It's all pretty straightforward. I do like to connect to the internet so the driver install will happen. Because I'm trying to get an older graphics card, the RX 570s to work, I tried Linux 20, but it did not come with uh, generic MediaTek drivers for my Wi-Fi, and I didn't feel like going down that road, so I switched back to Ubuntu 22 because it does have. Makes life a lot easier when you don't have to look for your initial driver to get on the internet. And you can click continue here if you want, and it'll set up your system how you want it or how it wants it, but I like to do something else just so I have a little bit more control because that's what Linux is all about, getting it set up the way you want. So I start off with my swap area and I've read that you need to do a swap area that's equal to your RAM. I have 64 gigs and I think that's a little too much probably. So I just do 32 gigs of swap approximately and then you'll have to scroll down to get to your free space again and click a plus and then this is where the root will go so all you do is put a slash there and hit ok and it'll say install now and it says here's what's going to happen when you click continue and yeah we're good with that we got our time zone and i won't show you all this but you fill out this information hit continue and then the install starts it will prompt you to remove your USB drive and then it'll reboot and it will reboot into Grub, which is the new bootloader that Linux will install. And you can either boot into Windows from Grub or from Linux or to Linux. And then you can go back into your BIOS if you don't want that to be your default bootloader and then uh, select your Windows partition to be primary. And it will boot there. Or you can actually um, edit Grub to boot Windows by default and give yourself like a three or four or five second uh, boot prompt to select which OS you want to boot into. But anyway, this is this process and I won't show you all this stuff. I'll continue when we get back into Linux. Thanks.